Uh, very happy to have Ryan Beer here uh, in Fort Lauderdale. He's a longtime friend of TCG. We're really excited to have Big Leaf on as a supplier as they're kind of changing the way people think about SD-WAN in the space. So without any further ado, I'm gonna bring, uh, I'm gonna bring Ryan Beer up. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, Appreciate man. It. Yep, thank you. All right. I was told that this is the mic. Okay, there we go. All right. So yeah, Ryan Beer. Uh, I support the Southeast out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and Big Leaf's actually headquartered out of uh, Portland, Oregon. So I support the East Coast and then part of the Southeast for them. Um, so if you have any questions as we're going along, feel free to stop me or we can save them for the end too, however you guys want to do it. So go ahead and jump in. Okay. So our focus really around SD-WAN in this space, and, and for many people that don't know what SD-WAN is, we can start off there. It's, it's software-defined wide area networking, so rerouting of applications around internet issues that are happening on circuits. So from, from a high level, that's really what it is, it is freely moving applications like hosted VoIP, Office 365, Salesforce, uh, around intermittent network issues that are happening on circuits. So our focus around SD-WAN is a little bit niched in the space, a little bit different. So uh, giving our customers the ability to use multiple different internet connections of any type. Uh, so we're aggregating those connections together through our device, whether that's fiber and coax or DSL and, and uh, wire, wireless or coax as the primary circuit. It doesn't matter to us, um, but now giving the ability to load balance or share that important traffic across those applications. So if that, I mean, across those circuits. So um, important traffic meaning things like hosted VoIP, Office 365, Salesforce, um, really sensitive applications that are having issues over the internet where packet loss, latency, jitter, these type of brownout situations are, are really affecting how applications perform and, and affecting the end user experience. So what we're doing is giving the customer the ability to use these commodity-based internet circuits, aggregating them together through our device and us load balancing that traffic across those multiple internet connections. So if one connection were to fail, that hosted VoIP call isn't going down. If that circuit were to degrade with packet loss, that hosted VoIP call or that Office 365 session can move over, move around that issue, fail over around that issue in real time. So from a high level, that, that's really what SD-WAN is doing, specifically Big Leaf, is giving the ability to use any type of internet connection you want, plugging them into a, an SD-WAN appliance, which is our Big Leaf router on site, and sharing that important traffic across those multiple internet circuits. Yep. So I do like the way this slide reads. You know, the cloud is only as good as your connection to it. So this example is showing coax and DSL, but still being able to run your, your mission critical applications where so many customers now do, do have a secondary circuit or, or have had a backup circuit for so long that they're you know, paying to hope to never use where this is truly an active, active scenario now and, and the total amount of bandwidth you're paying for being used for, for all of your applications. So uh, this is showing, you know, uh, hosted voice, AWS, Salesforce, Office 365, like I said, these mission critical business applications that customers want to be able to use over more commodity based internet circuits like fiber and coax and DSL and, and obviously 4G wireless as well. So what, what this slide is showing, this is pretty important, I really want to hit on a couple things here. So on the left side of the screen where you see where it says Big Leaf Router and, and Firewall, that, that's really our single biggest differentiator in this space is that we are always dedicated to deploying outside of an existing firewall. Um, so for us, we, we are trying to alleviate the complexities around SD-WAN that come from having to forklift security networks every time you want to improve your, your hosted VoIP experience or your, you know, your, your cloud experience. So as customers are moving these important applications out to the cloud, they're looking at how are, how are my internet connections going to perform for these, these cloud applications like hosted VoIP? And I keep using that as the example because it's so sensitive to issues like packet loss, latency, and jitter where you're getting that choppy VoIP call. And that's usually not from a circuit failing, it's degrading with some sort of latency, packet loss, or jitter issue. Um, so our focus around security is to provide that reliability for your cloud applications without the complexities of having to take over your security network. Um, so for us, that, that's really our strategic focus in this space is being outside the firewall on the WAN side of the firewall and really have worked with any type of, of appliance today, where it, whether it's Fortinet, Juniper, Palo Alto, Cisco, Barracuda, I mean, really have seen all of them at this point. So we, we are completely transparent to that security outside the firewall, but providing that cloud reliability without the complexities that come from us trying to, to take over the customer security network every time to do that. So a little bit different in the space where there are a lot of SD-WAN providers that do want to take ownership of the security and, and that, that's just where we are a little bit different in the space and somewhat niched in that if there's an existing security solution in place, we don't have to touch that in any way to improve your VoIP, your Office 365, your, your, your mission critical applications. So I talked about the left side of the screen where it says Big Leaf Router and the firewall. So this is what we're calling our split architecture, kind of a little diagram of what our topology would look like. But the right side of the screen where it says Big Leaf Gateway Cluster, that's really where our cloud focus comes into play. So we have six of our gateways and peering centers around the country. 
Um, so we're in Atlanta, Chicago, New York, da Dallas, Seattle, and LA, uh, where we have direct peering with hundreds of different content providers. So hosted, hundreds of different hosts of VoIP providers, Amazon for AWS, Microsoft for Office 365, and Azure. Um, so kind of giving that, uh, that agnostic approach to whatever cloud application the customer is looking to use, but providing that reliability over whatever internet connections they want to use as well. So and I, like I said, I keep using hosted VoIP as, as the example. That, that's really our single biggest driver in this space is hosted VoIP, is providing that, uh, that clean call experience regardless of one of your internet connections failing with packet loss or going down completely. And I'll talk about that in a little bit more depth in a second. Yep, so there's a snapshot of where, where our gateways are. So St very strategic and frankly very uh, expensive investments for us to make to have direct peering with those major providers like Amazon and Microsoft and all the ho major hosted VoIP providers, Google, um, so, and here's just some of the, the names there where we do have some of the direct peering. Obviously not all of them, but just showing that those data centers were giving us the advantage of having the direct peering with these major providers. All right, so I'm going to kind of go into a couple of features that kind of did, or, uh, highlight where our focus around hosted VoIP and, and really these cloud applications come, even to the point where we're seeing it now where we, you know, partners have put us as a line item on their VoIP quotes, where they're not selling a VoIP solution without us as the, almost, as the, as the insurance policy to make sure that that VoIP is going to work regardless of one of their internet connections going down. Um, so what this is explaining is our, our same IP failover. So out of those gateways that I was just talking about around the country, we're actually issuing new public IP addresses to the customers. Um, so an advantage there is a cost savings benefit that we've seen is, is uh, carriers charge a monthly recurring fee for their IP addresses, and ours are just a one-time setup fee. So that's been really well received too. But obviously the, the technical benefit here is that we can now move that VoIP call or that whatever cloud application it is, that hosted VoIP call from carrier one to carrier two to carrier three without having to drop the IP address and reestablish every time. So what that does is keep the call up seamless through the, a sub one second failover process across multiple carriers. So if it had to fail from Windstream to AT&T to CenturyLink, it doesn't matter to us because that IP address isn't changing on the firewall. The firewall sees it as one IP address on the other side. So a little bit technical there, but what that's saying is that that VoIP call is moving from carrier to carrier without having to drop the call and call them back. Yeah, yeah sure. To be honest, it's, it's a little bit different how they're doing it. So they're not issuing the IP addresses because a lot of the competitors don't have that gateway aspect where they're built into the core of the internet right now. So it's been a little bit different how they're handling failover. And usually most of our competitors are trying to replace the firewall. So they're handling their failover process on the LAN side where ours is strictly on the LAN side with that one firewall on the, on the IP, um, that one IP address on the firewall, excuse me. Yep, so that, that, this slide is really important for VoIP, and I know I keep using that as the example, but that's really been our, our biggest sweet spot in this space. Regardless of size of opportunity, just VoIP reliability over the internet, when we, everybody knows the internet has issues all the time. And it's not the, the hard outages that aren't happening as much anymore, it's really those, those brown out degradation issues that are making your call choppy and no one can figure out why. Yep. So being able to move around, I like I say, not, not driving over the potholes in the road, but taking a different route to get where we need to go, if that makes sense. So, Avoiding packet loss, latency, and jitter, those type things. Is this going to work? There we go. All right, so how we're determining when to use our same IP failover is through our intelligent load balancing. So we're sending 10 custom packets a second down each one of the circuits, and then our software monitoring those packets for things like latency, jitter, packet loss, um, available throughput, so able to make those real-time determinations based on those 10, time, those 10 custom packets a second. So that's how we're determining which circuit is healthiest at that moment in time. If a VoIP call is going down circuit one and that shoots to 6% packet loss, we're moving that VoIP call to the other circuit to keep that call live and healthy and they're not feeling that choppiness and don't even know that it just changed from carrier one to carrier two. Yep. So moving back and forth to avoid those real-time issues. All right, so the, the dynamic QoS piece of this that I want to talk about. So our, our bookends of the equation is not, not a, a router on one site and a router on the other site. It's router on site talking to our, our gateway network where, we, where we're built to with those, have the direct peering with those cloud applications. So what this is showing is our really our bi-directional QoS because we have end-to-end -end control of those cloud applications. So we're not letting it hit the public internet where it will get affected by packet loss. We have complete control making sure that we can protect and, and move around that traffic because of us uh, issuing that one IP address onto the, onto the uh, firewall. So the, the second point on here I wanted to point out is dynamically adapting to variable throughput. So that's really important for honoring QoS over circuits like coax and still being able to provide a good VoIP experience over coax, um, where that, that 100 meg coax circuit might be performing at 70 megs at three in the afternoon. We're not still sending 100 megs of traffic down that circuit. We're only gonna send as much as it can hold at that moment in time. So sending those 10 custom packets a second, 
determining how much bandwidth that circuit can hold at that single second in that moment of time and only sending as much as it can hold. Yep, so this piece is pretty important too. So the plug and play installation, I'm sure that term has been tossed around a lot where, uh, you know, Channel Partners Online did an article about it for, for us for what it's worth. But the, the, the only way we can really position this in, in our, our presentation is because of our outside the firewall approach. So we, we have seen it uh, a little bit now where some other SD-WAN providers are starting to say they can work outside of a firewall where they can bridge and make it work somewhat source with an existing firewall where this is really our only way of doing it. This is our focus. If there's a firewall in place that a customer is comfortable with, we, we don't want to have to bring the complexities of ripping that out or um, uh, adjusting that in any way to make sure their VoIP is going to work better at, that, at their multiple locations or, or whatever it may be. So even to the point where now it's been obviously the you know, everybody wants the 50 site, 20 site opportunities, but even down to the point where we're selling single site opportunities every single day, where people are saying, you know, how, how does SD-WAN work in a single site? There's no WAN, and there really is. It's just the outside WAN, it's just the outside network. So for us, we, we sell single site opportunities every single day, and the implementation that comes from us being outside the firewall. So when we, uh, we get a signed order, we send out a circuit detail request, so we're gathering that circuit information on the front end, and we're pre-configuring that device based on those circuit details. So when it arrives on site, they're plugging in their two circuits, or however many they have, we hold up to four. Uh, so plugging in their two circuits, typing in their new IP address, and they're ready to go. And, and that, that ease of implementation comes from us not having to breach the, the firewall or the security in any way. So I keep hitting on that part, but that's really, really our differentiator in this space, so we wanna make sure that that's, that's coming across pretty clearly. Yep, so we get this question a lot where in, in multi-site opportunities that the site-to-site -site connectivity is still there. Obviously our focus around security is not replacing the firewall, so there is a need for site-to-site -site connectivity where, uh, you know, last month we had an 83-site win. That was a great win for us. It was a senior living facility um, uh, across the country where they had four to net firewalls at each site. They came to us because they didn't want to have to redo their HIPAA compliance audit. They were very comfortable with their security solution and they had VPN set up off of those four to nets. That's just, that was just a perfect opportunity for us. Obviously that's on the larger scale, 83 sites. Our sweet spot is more in the, the 20 site, even down to the single site range like I was just talking about. Um, but for any site to site needs, that, that VPN off of those firewalls and we're making sure that those VPNs can fail over if a circuit were to go down completely. So this slide's a little wordy. I don't, I don't love this slide, but really what I was just saying there is just making sure that that VPN is healthy regardless of issues happening on one, one circuit. Okay, so this is a snapshot of what our, our dashboard looks like or our portal. So our partners, you got you guys and, and your customers will be able to see uh, all of your locations and all of your circuits from one central dashboard. So being able to monitor those circuits, see how they're performing, bandwidth utilization, uh, packet loss, latency, jitter, really, really granular detail into what your applications are doing and what your circuits are performing like, but being able to provide uh, ongoing support or really tier one support based on these metrics. So if you're logging in or you're getting a, an email alert from us that one of your circuits went down, we really want to be the first call. This is a, a fully managed service. We have a 24 by seven US based support team. Uh, SD-WAN being our only products, obviously this is our, our very, very focused space here where supporting customer networks and, and really the issues we're fielding all the time are circuit issues or my VoIP call went choppy, can you help me nail down where this packet loss issue was or something like that. E even to the point where uh, we're, we're staying on the phone with them while they call their carrier to help them through that issue. So really acting as that, that tier one support uh, for anything that, that may be happening in their network. Yep, so this is a monthly summary report at, that we send out at the end of each month. So we started doing these a couple years ago. Um, these have been really well received. It's very easy for us to do, but, but very different in this space and I haven't heard of anybody else doing this. So just sending out uh, metrics at the end of each month showing what we did behind the scenes that month. So uptime improvement, QoS adaptations, major and minor issues that we fix. So really just trying to stay in front of them. We've had customers that have had zero minutes of downtime in three or four years where we, if they change IT staff or something, something like that, this is really us keeping a mind share and making sure that they know what we were doing behind the scenes, cleaning up their VoIP calls and things like that. So um, just an example real quick. So last week we had a, uh, an order came in. It was a single site order insurance agency where they were having issues with their VoIP phones. The partner sold them Coax and Big Leaf. And on the quote, it said uh, VoIP optimization service dash Big Leaf. And I thought that was the coolest thing I'd seen because they were taking away some of the fluff buzzword around SD-WAN and really just getting down to what the benefit was for that exact client. And we were just a line item on that quote. Here's your VoIP protection. You don't have to take it, but this is going to protect your VoIP over your multiple circuits. And we thought that was just a, a great example there in, in how we're positioned. So not, not to niche ourselves into single site opportunities, but that was just a great fit. And obviously everybody does have those type of opportunities. 
So I can talk about pricing in a second. I'm happy to go into that, but I want to see if there were any questions before talking about the pricing piece or any questions about the, the outside the firewall part of that. So pretty straightforward, obviously, and it's okay if there's no questions, but the, the, the security piece, you'll, you'll get into that as you're talking about SD-WAN a little bit. I mean, just asking, you know, what, what does your security environment look like? And obviously there, there are so many great security providers. You're going to hear from SiteLock in a minute where we've done uh, some similar opportunities, not specific with SiteLock, but specific opportunities where they have a cloud-based firewall that you're going to hear about. So for us, we would put a little router device on site and VPN to a cloud-based firewall, and I, we can hear about that a little bit more in a minute. So, but yeah, sure, go ahead. Appliances, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll go back. That's a good question. So we are, that's exactly right. So we're pre-configuring the device, shipping it out directly to the customer. Because we're not replacing that firewall, it's a five to 10 minute self-install for the customer. So our support team can be there to stay on the phone to handhold through that process with you guys as the partner or the customer, but very, very straightforward and, and have had minimal issues with those implementations. Really the only extent of the legwork is, is typing that IP address on the firewall. So if somebody has to remote into the firewall or something like that, that's really the, the extent of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, I've never gotten that question. So it's either the partner doing it. We've had general managers at pizza shops been able to do it. Someone will remote into the firewall or something like that. So that, that ease of implementation is really our, our focus in this space. So obviously, if it was a large opportunity or something like that, we you know Black Box is one that we've worked with for a larger opportunity for, for some of those rollouts. But um, yeah, not very, very unnecessary most of the time, I would say. Yeah, and, and from a proof of concept standpoint, we get that question a lot, you know, how, how are you approaching this as a, as a new technology? So we can do a 30 or 60 day free trial, um, depending on how large the opportunity is. So just trying to be flexible there in terms of everybody being comfortable selling a new technology and making sure it's gonna work in their environment. So happy to offer that as well. Okay. Go ahead and talk about pricing just real quick, touch on it, but we can, I can send this to you guys after too, so, so no worries on that. But, um, just on the left side of the screen, these, these are our, our, our sizing packages. So what we're supporting through our device is these speeds. So um, a lot of times we'll get the question, well, my customer has a total amount of bandwidth of you know, 120 over 20. You know, maybe one of their circuits is coax, coax or something like that. That customer could go with our 50 by 50 package, knowing that they're going to be rate limited a little bit on the download. They have plenty of room on the upload. So just understanding that it's not mandatory to match it up with whatever big leaf package you see here, just about the amount of bandwidth that you think your customer needs to put through our device. Yeah, so those are the different packages there. These are, this is our single site retail pricing. Anything above five-ish locations, we can get pretty aggressive on our, on our volume discounting. So um, keep that in mind as well. But yeah, this, this is our single site pricing and then the, the redundancy options in the bottom right for a, a second active Big Leaf device and, and two switches to manage those. Yes, sir. Yeah, so on our single site deals, it's, it's really not the length of the term, it's about the volume of the opportunity. So uh, for, for us, our standard is 12 months, so if they wanted to do a 24 or 36 to match it up with their circuits or something like that, if they had one single site, there, there would be no cost break on, on that, unfortunately. But the, the cost break comes for, uh, for us comes from volume, so five, four or five plus locations, usually. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, so if we changed our pricing or something like that, that would lock them into that 36 month pricing. Exactly right. But they're not getting a, a cheaper price for, for getting a 36 month. Yes, sir. That's correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's correct, yep. Anything above five plus locations, yes, that would be, the, the answer would be yes to that question, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, so the IP address part, pricing in the top right, but um, yes, yeah, so that, that was really it. If anybody has any questions for me after the fact, I'm happy to answer. I just wanted to, the, the outside the firewall deployment and the focus around your cloud applications, that, that's really our, our, our success in this space right now. So I appreciate everybody's time. Thanks for having me in. Thanks.